Today on Education Forum, Schwab School of Music, an interview with Dr. Fred Cohen. Live from the studio in the College of Education and Health Professions, I atop Jordan Hall at Columbus State University in Columbus, Georgia. This is Education Forum with your hosts, Dr. Jeffrey Conklin and Greg Blaylock. Welcome to the Education Forum. I'm Jeff Conklin. Greg and I have been talking since the start of this show about bringing someone into the studio and interview someone from the downtown campus. And so we were fortunate enough today to bring in the uh, director of the Schwab School of Music. So with us today is Dr. Fred Cohen. Um, welcome, Fred. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, Thank we're glad you. you're with us today. And also with me today is my co-host, Dr. Greg Blaylock. Welcome, Greg. Thanks, Jeff. So, Fred, I guess we're going to jump right into it this morning. Um, how long have you been at CSU? Been here for about four years. This is my fourth year. Okay, okay. And where'd you come from? Well, I had been working at Montclair State University in New Jersey before this, and before that I was at the University of Richmond for about 16 years. Okay. And before that I was in uh, graduate school. Okay, yeah. So. <laughs> you remember those days. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the usual question now is, why Columbus State? Well. Um, it's a good question. I was um, uh, brought in by a headhunter kind of oh, person. Really? So, yeah. Really? Well, the Schwab School of Music is an amazing place, and I was—I still remember the phone call. So I was sitting in my office at Montclair State, and I got a call from a guy I knew I'd known a long, long time, sort of a friend, and he started talking about Columbus and the Schwab School of Music, of which I had known nothing, and okay. describing the downtown campus, okay. describing the faculty, describing the students, and I talked to him for an hour which is oh. a long time. Yeah. And I said at that, well, okay, um, I'm interested. Let, let them know I'm interested. And so we had a series of visits, and at the end of it, I accepted the job. I'm, it's, uh, so I've, I've been around a lot of music schools. I, I do accreditations and things like that. Okay. The faculty at the Schwab School of Music is one of the most kindest and self-supportive faculties of, of musicians I've ever met. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. a great pleasure. Well, cool. to be part of that. So when you came in, the campus downtown was brand new. Right. It was. I mean, I didn't really know that exactly, but yeah, okay. it was built in 2001, and I started in, oh my, 2007? Oh, okay. Six, so it's been 2006. there a few years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. Cool. Sure. So, so what's your, in terms of your previous work, uh, you've got quite a prolific background. Uh, can you talk a bit about some of the work you've done? Uh, sure. Not as director, but as like, a yes. non-director, just as a musician. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Interesting you know, stuff. I started out as a child. No, um, <laughs> uh, I was in. I sort of grew up in this group called the San Francisco Boys Chorus. Uh, when I was very young, I was about seven. I I um, was a nuisance at home, and my and I played recorder. I taught myself recorder, and to get rid of me, my oh. mother pushed me into this thing ah. to get me out of the house. <laughs> and um, I stayed with that organization for a very long time and had wonderful experiences. Um, I sang, you know, operas with the San Francisco Opera and with the San Francisco Symphony. We went on tours places, and I really grew wow. up in that. Wow. And I, um, so when I went to college, I'd had enough of music, actually. <laughs> I was really okay. sick of it, because okay. I'd been doing it my whole life. And I, I uh, went to major in psychobiology, um, which Whoa. at that time was a, a new Whoa. thing. Yeah. And there were two places you could do that. One was in UC Santa Cruz. I grew up in San Francisco. And the other was in Brown, and my brother had been at Brown. And he said, you cannot come here because I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> right. Typical brother. <laughs> right, typical yeah. brother. So I went to UC Santa Cruz. And sort of for fun, I started taking music just to sort of, because I had to take arts classes. Okay. Oh, sure. 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 Something you're familiar stuff. with. Yeah. Anyway, so I ended up double majoring in, in music and chemistry. And uh, I spent a year working in an in a organic chemistry lab and decided that wasn't going to be for me. OK. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. It was an intense experience. Those are the days when you, know, you put benzene in the refrigerator kind of stuff. And, you know. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and then, so then I, I ended up uh, going to uh, Cornell University for grad school and studying with this guy, Karel Huza, uh, who's a wonderful composer, still around today, great band uh, composer, great okay. person. Uh -huh. And um, I and, uh, got a job right out of that. And I, I, so my work, 
I'm sort of rambling, uh, has been as a conductor and a composer for a long, long time. Oh, I, um, okay. I've composed for just about every medium you can think of, and all kinds of individuals and ensembles, and I've conducted a lot of new music uh, and a lot of orchestras and bands and that kind of stuff. Fascinating. Now, um, I'm curious, uh, your parents musical? You come from a musical background? I'm guessing probably you do. Uh, not so much. Really? No, that's, that's no. Um, yeah. It's in certain families. There's sort of a tradition of going every other generation, so oh, that right? grandparents mm -hmm. have some let's say, musical interests, artistic interests, and then the, their children say, we're not going there, become professionals. <laughs> and, then, and their children say, well, that's interesting. That's I don't want to be... Exactly. Yeah, right. It's sort of like that. that. Fascinating. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it started out as just getting you out of the house, more or less. Yeah, more or but, less. But what yeah. I think is important about your story is, is uh, you know, kids, where you're, what you're doing today comes from a background of just playing around with a recorder, yeah. essentially. Yeah. yeah. Just getting involved in a local group. And, right. And, and then... Uh, kind of taking it from there. Right. It's not like you came from a family of we're artists, musicians. Your parents you were both that pushing no, you into No, no, I was a great disappointment to my mother. She yeah. said, <laughs> be a doctor or at least a dentist. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> she held out hope. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. She held out some hope when you became an organic chemist for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, was, there was potential. You could talk that. about benzene right. rings and right. where the hydrocarbons right. go and that sort of thing. That, but, yeah. Yeah. but then you let that go. I, I did. Fascinating. So what instruments do you play? Uh, piano and bassoon, but okay. uh, not well. Not well? Uh, huh? I, I, last time I gave a piano recital was about 10 years ago. Oh, is that right? Okay. 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 Right. Do, you, do you have a piano in your home? Yeah, we yeah. do. Do you use that to compose or no? Um, not much. I mostly no. compose at a desk, not unlike this. And, and uh, I have really? A, I have, yeah. Well, I, I'm old-fashioned. I, I you know, imagine music, I, I write down my thoughts, and then I also have a computer that okay. I use for notation primarily. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. The old-fashioned way, paper, huh? Yeah, paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like walk out into the fields and think about music and then write things down. That's sure, it, yeah. sure. So you've been uh, with CSU at the River Park, what we call the River Park campus, for about mm -hmm. four years now. Mm -hmm. In the four years, uh, what, what have you seen change uh, with the River Park campus? What are some things that you find different now than when you first came? Well, certainly the establishment of the other, the non-musical uh, aspects of it, you know, theater right. and, and uh, art sure. programs, beautiful facilities, now communications as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. In the Schwab School itself, it, it's been it's been great. Uh, you know, th these are one of the things that I think is true of my story and true of most musician stories is that they c people are at a young age very very passionate about music, about what they do, and and that's why they go into it. It's not mm -hmm. because someone said. You, know, you, you ought to do it. this. Yeah. yeah, or there's a ton of money or whatever. It's because, <laughs> right. it's because you can't really imagine life without it kind of thing. Okay. Um, and I think b building on that at the Schwab School since, since I've gotten here, um, I've seen just tremendous uh, improvements and accomplishments and, and the notion that you can really dream big and you can really accomplish big things if you set your mind to it musically in mm -hmm. terms of the uh, quality of the ensembles, the success of individual uh, students and faculty. So there's been a, an increasing um, amount of uh, capability. That's I've seen cool. that at the school. Right. Other things, I mean, just downtown has been thriving. I think it grows. There's there's always sure. more people, more stores, yes. all kinds. Yes. Of, it's very. It's a wonderful place. It yeah. is a great place for really for, st for a student to live and and I think attend classes. It's great. Uh, yeah. Well, the music school itself, just the the facility itself, is is unbelievably well structured for the study of music. I mean, okay. it was beautifully constructed with uh, four rehearsal rooms and many practice rooms. Everything is acoustically treated. Uh, the studios that faculty teach in are, are wonderful, sufficiently large for, like if you're, if you're a vocalist, you want to be able to project, you know, you want to be in a room that's long enough that you can you know, mm -hmm. project. And so those rooms are appropriate. Everything is it's beautifully, beautifully made. So students have just a tremendous opportunity to have sure. the best possible learning experience. How many, uh, how many School of Music students do we currently have down there? Would you 242. Say? Okay. So, right. Just okay. To throw a number out. Yeah, right. <laughs> just make that up. <laughs> 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 oh, I just got a phone call. 243. Right. <laughs> uh, so to, when was the last time you composed something for a performance? That, got um, that I completed a piece? Yes. Or that, yes. Uh, I completed a piece about, well, where are we? Um, about six weeks ago, I finished okay. a piece for uh, 
um, woodwind quintet and a piano that was commissioned by the faculty of University of Louisville uh, woodwind faculty quintet. Okay. And I'm working now on an, an oratorio, a creation or an oratorio, which is a piece for uh, chorus and singers and orchestra, but it's not stage, it's not an opera, you, you stay still pretty much, and it's based on creation texts from a whole variety of different cultures. Oh, yeah, interesting. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Fascinating. Yeah, I, I, uh, Gee. I get up early in the morning and I write music, and then I go to work and I don't write music. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, right, right. Because there's so. no opportunity. So. No, I know. So, right. with you being the director, do you still have time to teach, or do you do any teaching? Or? Um, well, I'm not Right now, I'm only teaching some uh, individual composition students. Okay. But okay. Uh, last couple of years before that, I've been directing the orchestra, mm -hmm. and now oh, we have okay. a full-time orchestra conductor. So I'm out of that. I see. So right. how did that feel to give that part up? That was, well, you know, a little bittersweet. But yeah, at the same sure. time, I'm, I'm very glad to to, to hand this to somebody whom I've, I've known for a long time, okay. and have great respect for, and who can spend all of his time really. Focus. Developing, yeah, that ensemble, which it, I couldn't. Yeah, I'm sure you couldn't with, the, yeah. with yeah, being right. the director. Right. Right. So yeah, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, you were talking a few minutes ago about you know, writing music and, and composing. I'm curious when you compose something, you've got it done, you've packaged it up, so to speak. You ever come back years later, a couple years later, a couple months later, look at it and go. You know, I wish I would have tweaked this, or I wish this was a little different. Do you, Did you go through that? Work? Um, not that often. There okay. have been times <laughs> that I've I've changed an ending to an orchestra piece once, but usually, when you come back to a piece and you look at it, first of all, you understand it better than when you're actually in the process of writing it, mm -hmm. and secondly, usually the changes you want to make are so dramatic, you might as well just write a new. Just piece. write a new piece. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Okay. 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 Uh -huh. That's really a so. Very much so the once you close the book on one, though, that's that's it. It's a finished yeah. baby. I mean, typically for me, I mean, I've been doing this a long, long time, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, when I when I finish the piece, I really do feel like it's balanced, it's mm -hmm. complete, okay. it's, it is finished, and, and to change it would would it'd be like you have if you had a painting and you said, oh, well, I think I'm going to put a tree here on this, you know, third of the canvas where there was nothing. It's like you can't do that. Right. You, it's you, just not part of the gestalt of it. It's a yeah. yeah it's just a new the sense of balance, right. and, and I, I, you know. Uh, I'm old-fashioned also in the sense that my pieces have organic form, that they, they, they tend to be self-contained. Okay. That, you know, I, I think a lot in my music about framing art, mm -hmm. you know, music has a beginning and an end. Okay. And, and a painting has a frame to that. But in fact, in a lot of what I do in music, it, it, I, I, I sort of challenge the notion of where the frame begins and ends. I work a lot with cyclical pieces that okay. piece may end someplace that may not feel like the end because, in fact, it might it's come coming back, back uh, around. Something like that. Okay. Is it a music exists for us at all times, and mm -hmm. when we choose to start and stop a piece, is kind of arbitrary. So I deal with that. It's not, again, a particularly new mo notion. I mean, William Schumann, or sorry, Robert Schumann, very right. important composer, right. thought like this as well. Thought ah, I see. Things. Okay. So interesting. And and do you ever do you ever go back at some of your work and and just say to yourself overall, you know? I liked it at the time. I just I've grown. I, I don't like that piece. Does that does that happen at all? Or? Um, yeah. I mean, the thing is, the piece you're working on now is the piece that's the greatest piece you've ever written. Uh, because okay. if it's okay. not, then you're really Why are you're you're not really getting up at right. three in the morning yeah. to sit down. Right. You got to feel that way. And then, but yeah, I I mean, I really don't um, get a perspective on my piece. It takes me ten years. Is that right? Yeah, okay. I totally understand okay. what I've done. What you were doing then and where it's come. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. that's fascinating. And I have a lot of theoretical knowledge and things like that. But you don't put that into play when you're writing music. You sort of probably not. Yeah. It's not healthy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. You don't right. want to dissect like that and make it too uh, mechanical. Well, no, over the because you're being yeah you're being it's creative. Arrows. Yeah. You're building. You're yeah. Not, you know, I can see. Not logos. Okay. I see. Yeah. Interesting. So what are you listening to right now in your car? Well, I drive a scooter. Is that your scooter out there? Yeah. I saw <laughs> it. I saw it. I thought, I wonder if that's Fred's, but yeah. I thought, no, nah, he wouldn't come from it. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't actually so you don't. To, I don't listen to uh, anything in my car. No, yeah. you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> the scooter is, it blows by. But man. I do listen, I listen to a, a wide variety of stuff. I do it at yeah. my desk. I put on, uh, well, we record a lot of stuff at the Shrope School. I listen to pretty much everything that comes through. Okay. Ah, I listen okay. to a lot of new music. I listen to performers I'm interested in. I listen to... Folk music, I really am very eclectic. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. as you okay. should be, I would imagine, because of what you do. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. I'm impressed by that. That's scooter man. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How long have yep. you been riding a scooter? 
Uh, two years. Yeah? Yeah. What got you on a scooter? Gas? Um, partly that and partly a teenage daughter who needed ah. a car. Ah, okay, that'll do it. Yeah. But yeah, I guess, I mean, it gets uh, between 80 and 90 miles a gallon, and Columbus is a great town for a scooter. Really? Yeah. 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 I mean, I go between, I mean, I, I live sort of in Midtown, and okay. I go to the downtown campus and to main campus, and that, and that it's great. And, and with that kind of fuel mileage, yeah. 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 Great. great. It's not like the Harley. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> kind of opposite, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, well, we flip those people off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I've ridden scooters before, and I think they're they're fun. They're yeah. a real kick. They are. Yeah. But I never imagined. Tim Mescon has a Tim Tim Mescon also rides a scooter. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So I've talked about forming a scooter club. Yeah, I was going to say you guys yeah. should ride yeah. Yeah. together. Absolutely. Take over Starbucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm wondering if we want to take a break. Uh, Okay. Uh, take a yeah. couple minute break okay. and come back and yeah. talk a little we, bit more about the, the why school do we do music that? itself. I'd just like to remind you that you're watching the Education Forum, and this is coehp.tv. EHP TV. At the break, we were talking a little bit, and we wanted to ask Fred about composing music for videos, and you know what that entails. And, and have you done that? And uh, sure, yes, I've written for film and video, and I uh, actually used to teach that. Was one of the things I ran an electronic music lab. Okay. <laughs> for okay. Twelve years. Yeah. Okay. Um, used to be writing, you know, doing things with films very complicated. I mean, oh, in, the, okay. in the 30s, there are these stories, you know, that there would be, you know, the movie would be shown on the screen and the, com the conductor composer would be, you know, conducting along, trying to make sure things matched up. And there right. were some people who were really terrific at it and some people who used other kind of <laughs> techniques like uh, stopwatches and some things in the film itself to, to cue the time. Um, Really, these days, it's changed so much. You can buy a program like Sibelius, which is a software notation program. Mm -hmm. And you can actually, you can run a video on your computer, and then you can simply put in hit points, like where you want same things to happen on, on, in, in the music. Okay. You, know, you set a tempo. You don't have to write any music. You just put in the hit points. So you just watch the video. You, you finger in the hit points, and then you can create music so that it's exactly the same thing called Mickey Mousing. Okay. Yeah, so, right? yeah, it's so easy. So, yeah, and then, and then, whether you, then you can do electronic or you can do it live, whatever you want, but it's, it's very, it's changed so much. So, it's a really wonderful, vital media now, oh, I think. I don't believe so, that, yeah. And it's, you know, you know, how music works with film, it's such an important piece of the storytelling. I think a lot of people perhaps don't really think much about that. About how important right. the music is, how it sets the tone, and absolutely, yeah. right. any uh, film and any story mm -hmm. really does communicate so much more than, than maybe what you're seeing or will go with what you're seeing. Well, I mean, film is uh, really still pretty much a two-dimensional. I mean, now we're moving to more three-dimensional things, but it's still pretty much a, a two-dimensional media, and music creates the emotional piece. It gives, I mean, you, gives you that depth. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, okay. like when I mean the um, you know, famous story is like Bernard Herrmann, who was the uh, composer for music of Psycho and other great works, and worked okay. with Hitchcock okay. a lot. And Hitchcock okay. basically said that 
without the music that Psycho would not have been. I mean, he was going to turn it oh, into yeah. a one-hour little short. You know, that's all it would have been worth. Right. Yeah. And, they, yeah. he, and then he he doubled Bernard's uh, Herman's uh, salary. Wow, yeah. fascinating. Nothing yeah. like he made, but still. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah. Let's talk a bit more about the curriculum at the school. Um, what kinds of experiences does a typical music student have? You know, what do they go through? Um, it's an incredibly busy, uh, in-depth curriculum. Um, basically, music students have, the first thing we teach them is that they have to become experts at time management because there's never enough time okay. to do what they need to do. The, the basic curriculum of the school is the, sort of the conservatory curriculum that was developed in the mid-1800s in France and in Germany. Okay. And so okay. it's intense study of theory and history and basis of music and then performance with ensembles of various kinds and then taking individual lessons. Okay, um, okay. And, and then expecting to practice. And they need to practice depending on the instrument between, I don't know, two to eight hours a day. No. Is that right? Yeah. Really? And wow. then do the liberal arts stuff. So these, okay. so these students are taking their regular coursework. Right. They're, they're studying theory. Yeah. They're performing. Mm -hmm. and, then and then they're, they're practicing. And they're practicing. six to eight or more hours yeah. practicing. Yeah. One of the yes. things I like to do, like last week I was bringing a visitor to the Schwab School, and it was 10 to 5, Friday afternoon, and I'm walking down the uh, practice room hallway where you can, you can they're, they're beautifully constructed rooms. If you're in the room, you can't really hear the person next to you. If you're outside, there's d leakage through the okay. door, so you can hear what's going on. They're full. Is that right? Oh, yeah. wow. On a so, Friday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. On a Friday afternoon. Yeah. Right, yeah. And Everybody they, and else on campus is gone. gone. <laughs> Long gone. <laughs> Long right. Everybody. Everybody. Yes. <laughs> right, yeah. So at 5 o'clock at night, at 10 o'clock at night, is it's, right? yeah. And that's how, and again, I, it comes from this passion. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah that would, it. you'd have to have it. Right. I mean, you how do. else could you do that? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Interesting. So, mm -hmm. so the students, you said there's a two, 240, 242 students yeah. currently. Uh, are they, uh, where do they come from? Where do you pull our students from? Um, they come from all over. About 10% of the students are international, oh, which okay. come from, and they, we have students now from China, Russia, wow. Uzbekistan, uh, Chile, Japan, and I'm going to miss a lot of countries, but <laughs> mm -hmm. um, all over the world. Okay, um, okay. And about another 10% come from out of state. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Florida, Texas, but also everywhere, you know, Minnesota, California, Oregon. Wow. And then the rest come from all over Georgia. So how is it that students from uh, international students even hear about the Schwab School of Music? Like, how do they connect yeah. to um, begin with? There are a lot of ways. One of the things is that the faculty at the Schwab School are really remarkable faculty. And recruiting for music faculty is a 12-month-a-year ah. endeavor. Yes. And it's quite a diverse faculty, from what I can yes. tell, in terms mm -hmm. of... Experiences so, and so yeah, they're out they're nationalities. out recruiting all the time. Yeah, basically okay. they perform, they recruit. We also have um, we have a particular award called a Woodruff Award, which is a, a wonderful award, it, which mm -hmm. affords a student who wins this award uh, receives full tuition mm -hmm. and room and board wow. and five thousand dollars a year. And this is for undergraduate, wow. so it's very wow. competitive. Oh, I'm sure it is. And yeah. people from all over the world compete for we'll compete and for that. Send in DVDs and all this. What an opportunity for them, though. That's excellent. Yeah. yeah. And then they That's come here and they, they do very well. So when faculty are out, you said it's you know it's, they're all, we're always recruiting faculty. Yeah. What does that mean exactly? You know, you, you have faculty that are performing in different places and traveling. How does recruiting fit into that logistically? Well, you're looking for students from middle school on who have that fire in the belly, you know, okay. and who have okay. that. It's not really looking for talent per se, but looking for someone who has that interest. And when you do something, when you're, when you're playing at a high school or when you do a concert and people come to you, if they have this interest, they make the connections. And also, the, got that. The, yeah, and, and their teachers, the private teachers for these students know, they say, well, this student has an interest and I know, you know, I know Lisa Oberlander is a great clarinetist and if you went to Lisa's studio, she could really help you because look what Lisa has done. Lisa has taken students from, you know, from my high school and have, they've gone on to professional jobs and to great graduate schools and I have faith that she can do that for okay. my students. And so there's a lot of this kind of thing going on. Okay. Nice. Now you mentioned that they have individual lessons as well. That's yeah. a big part of that curriculum. Yeah. Yeah. The one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's all one-on-one. -on -one. 
The individual lessons are one-on-one. -on -one. Everyone gets at least an hour a week. Okay. Individual with, time. With, with a faculty person. Yeah, with an applied faculty okay. member. Right? Okay. Okay. Fascinating. So, wow. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. more. Okay. Depending. And then they all do. Uh, once a week, there's a master class where, where the students play for each other in the studio. Like all the pianists will get together and play. Not everyone every week, but they'll, the students will play, and there'll be uh, opportunity for you know give and take on feedback, that. feedback. critical analysis of right. piece. Uh, really? And okay. we bring in a number of guest artists. Everyone who comes to the Strobe School to perform is involved in a master class and a teaching opportunity. So mm -hmm. we get there's a lot of sharing. There's a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of education going on. Interesting, you know, you said something that uh, rang a bell for me in terms of when we we're talking about recruiting students. You, you said, you know, it's not always about who are the most talented, who mm -hmm. are the most mm -hmm. musically talented, but who really has a fire in the belly. And, and I'm just thinking about middle school kids right now, high school students who may not see themselves as uh, this musical prodigy, but just really have an interest in learning. Uh, yeah, love the Schwab School of Music is a place that... that might interest them. I mean, sure. It's not something they would necessarily write off. I just think about, about myself in middle school, and, and I would hear something like that and go, well, I'm, gonna write, I'm, I'm not musically inclined, so I'm not even going to, I'm yeah. interested, but, but I just don't have that natural talent sure. that my buddy has yeah. for guitar, and so yeah. I'm just not even going to explore it. Mm -hmm. it. It makes me think about a discussion we have here in the College of Ed many times about, uh, as we train teachers, as we uh, get teachers, take them from uh, non-teachers into practicing master teachers in the classroom. This idea of whether teachers are born mm -hmm. teachers, great right. teachers, is it an art or, is it or, or are yeah. they made? Are yeah. great teachers yeah. born yeah. or are they made? And of course, the answer is a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. You know, but the main thing is you have to have a real interest you in teaching desire, right? and yeah. improving your craft. Yes. If you right. have some natural ability, that's not that'll only take you so far. You still have a lot that you can improve upon, and mm -hmm. even if you don't have a natural ability, that's something that. Uh, that we can build in. That's part of what we do. Is that true? Don't they have to have some of that natural ability, you though? Mean on the instrument? Yes. Not just the burning desire, but they have to have that natural ability, they, they, don't they? They come together, generally yeah. speaking. I okay. mean, we, uh, if, you're, if you have the desire, the, the ability is often connected to yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and, you know, there have been studies, and, and I, I tell this to students at the, in our opening convocation, we have sort of a formal opening convocation. Mm -hmm. tell, there mm -hmm. have been studies that, that demonstrate, that prove, that the students who are most successful in music schools are the ones who work hardest. You know, the hardest thing about getting into the music school is getting into the music school. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once you're there, you work hard and you have good direction and you have people who will teach, te will teach you how to teach, will teach you how to do the things you need to do, you will succeed. Okay. And, and with Schwab School, one of the things I love about it, frankly, is that the success rate of it is so high. And that's yeah. because there's a, there's a really tight curriculum, there's a great sense of the importance of teaching among the teachers. Okay. We can talk okay. about that at some point. Yeah. About half of our students are music ed majors, music education, which is really a double major. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's music and I education. See. It's music performance and education. And so they have, aside from having no electives, you know, <laughs> they, they, they really are tremendously well trained. And, and I can just boast that uh, this year, which has been a difficult year in the job market, all but one student was placed somewhere oh, in the United right? States. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. That it's right? un it's that says unheard something of. right there. Yeah. 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 That is unheard of. Yeah. You know, I have a friend who is a trumpet player uh -huh. and he was in the Air Force and uh -huh. that's what he did. And mm -hmm. now he's down at Florida State working on his dock. Mm -hmm. And trying to get together and do something with him is almost impossible because he talks about well we've yeah. always got to play and we've always got to rehearse right. and we've got and you know he's been playing trumpet his whole life but he still takes lessons. Yeah. And I'm always puzzled by that. Not only that, but I bet you anything, he does the same war as he did when he was in middle school. Oh, really? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. it's yeah. that, yeah? Yeah, you got to do it. And yeah, great. you have to take lessons. There's always more to learn. There's always, sure, we all uh, take lessons. See, yeah. it, and that's where I was always puzzled. I thought, well, if you've been doing this for a 25-year career in the Air Force, yeah, and, right. you know, now, and you've got your master's in it, and now you're working on your doc. Why would you need lessons? Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, it does, uh, reminds me of uh, conversations we've had recently about uh, with us and how many of us in the College of Ed, uh, part of our job is to just read right, and to right, discuss right, ideas right, and yeah. to think about and debate ideas and read and write and that whole scholarship end of things, uh, I guess, is, is be very similar to uh, right. Yeah, again, it's your craft, you have to their craft, their understanding, expand. Now, yeah. mm -hmm. um, 
How does a music education degree differ from other types of degrees that we offer here at the university? Other types of education degrees? Yes, or, uh, uh, education or degrees. Or yeah. University well, degrees. <coughs> well, generally. Yeah. I mean, as I say, it's, it's a double major. You yeah. have to do all the music stuff and you have to do all the education stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I know when we uh, we have music ed uh, majors in, in, for instance, our introduction to special education course that right. they oh, have yeah. to take. Mm -hmm. I know they're usually the ones that are uh, most pressed for time. That it's it, most yeah. difficult for them to find a section right. that fits in with their the, right. they're uh, ones we other always have to hear that. You know, it's always hard to make it to the class. But yeah, you know, yeah. they're always students that work their tails off right, absolutely. in special ed because they're, yeah, they're always absolutely. interested. In, you know, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, I mean, I think the students who, again, want to be are self-selecting to be music education majors as they come in as, you know, 17, 18, 19 year olds. Okay. College. They have, there's usually a hero in their lives. Mm. Usually it's a director, a band director, a choral director, somebody who's just made the difference, who's reached out to them ah. and, and made them feel like this is, this is what I want to do in my life. Mm -hmm. and, and they're, you know, though we give them skills and we take them on a structured curriculum, it's, but they're, they're looking at the end game. Mm, um, and sure. I think that really focuses them. And they, one of the things that's surprising to them, which is really very interesting, is that as they go through this process in the education system, they realize how much these people who were their heroes knew and know about education, about music, how important it is to become fluent on your instrument, how important okay. it is to get, you know, learn about special ed, to learn these things. And they develop a really, uh, a really a much a wonderful recognition of appreciation of, yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah of, of what it is that they were gifted to to have received interesting that yeah. is yeah so what are some of the uh, you, you talked about uh, how uh, school of music graduates um, uh, the last several years have been able to find jobs uh, what are the yeah. kinds of things that your graduates do with their with their degrees what do they go on to do well the the music ed people who continue all the way through and, and want to teach, will teach. Uh, in, in Georgia, you're uh, qualified to teach K through 12 choral and instrumental, which is kind of insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, kind of so, a mixed bag there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> so they'll, they'll end up teaching somewhere. Some, some will stay okay. in Muskogee, some will go uh, elsewhere in the state, and some will go uh, really all over the country. Uh, I see. Do your international school. students stay, or do they go back? Um, the international students that I'm aware of actually are all performance majors. Okay. So, and okay. they will, it, it really depends. So, I mean, this year we had students who went to, I mean, really the top uh, uh, conservatories and, and schools of music in the United States, graduates who went to mm -hmm. on full rides, Northwestern and Texas and uh, Yale University, things like that. I mean, the best schools. Okay. Um, and they will go on in performance and do their master's work and then I see. we'll see what happens after that. Okay. Some went to Europe. They studied, we have somebody who went to Graz, and we have someone who went to uh, another uh, university in Europe. Exactly. So there's, the, wow. they move They're, around. They and, do, uh, they do. Yeah. Now you offer simply undergraduate degrees, or do you have master's degrees as well? We have uh, master's in education, music education. Okay, okay. And uh, we have an artist diploma, which is a strictly, it's a post-baccalaureate degree, but it's a performance-based degree, so you don't actually take... Uh, academic classes, history and theory and things like that. It's just performance and so we have students see. do that. And we're working and hoping to get a uh, master's in, uh, in performance very soon. Okay, so, uh, okay. so you've made that application and put that proposal yeah, together. Yeah, okay. it's been sitting there for a little bit. We're hoping to get movement. Sure. You know, like as, we other, speak. As, as we speak. Other, uh, <laughs> as we speak, it's sitting right. with the BOR, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. the School of Music was recently awarded the Regents Teaching Excellence <coughs> Award for departments and programs by the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia. What does that mean to the Swope School of Music? Well, first let me say what, what that, <coughs> excuse me, what that, what that is, is that they give, <coughs> excuse me, one, um, one department or program in the 35 member system of the 35 member college system is, is recognized as being an outstanding program or department. And so okay. there's, a, there's quite an application process that's mm -hmm. involved. Um, and I think what it meant for us is a, is a validation of the good work that we do. Okay. I mean, okay. Uh, and yeah. one of the things that it was recognized. Yeah. Okay. Based and they based on there are a lot of criteria. It's like an eighteen page report that they, <laughs> that they look at. But one of the things I, I spoke to uh, the people at uh, Atlanta, Linda Noble, who who administered this, and one of the things they were most impressed with is something that's a very cool thing that the school does. It's maybe unique, which is that we have a voluntary peer review system mm -hmm. that we've had since I got here, which is that we work in groups of three, three faculty, mm -hmm. and over the year, uh, 
one faculty will be reviewed, the other will review, you know, each so they, they work. And the thing about this is it has nothing to do with the promotion tenure process. Okay. This is done outside, outside of that. Yeah. yeah. And so what it does is it enlivens a really wonderful series of conversations about teaching because we, these, you know, people mix up, they see other things, and so there's this constant talk about what is good teaching, what do we do for the students, there's this focus on the students mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of this. And, and again, every year, I bring this up in faculty planning week and we say, do we want to do this again? Because it's a voluntary Strictly thing. voluntary. Yeah. yeah, and everyone volunteers to do it and carries it out very, very professionally. Very so, so they yeah. believe in it then right. as well. Right, right. Yeah. And it's, again, additional work. No one gets credit for it, but it's, it's really important to our, to our mission. Mm -hmm. and sure, and it's all, what I like about that is it's all about improving uh, you know, instruction, improving right. faculty right. members, and there's not the, the baggage that, that might that might be related to tenure or promotion that, that right. could obfuscate that a bit um, right. and change sure. the process so a bit. There can be really honest conversation. And if right. someone has this wonderful review, it may end up in a tenure file. But sure. if not, right. it doesn't matter. So it takes yeah. a certain yeah. amount of risk out so yeah. real critical yeah. analysis can happen right. mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to improve uh, one's job performance. Right. So you got the award. And mm -hmm. it was quite the process, and you feel that that was a, a big component of you getting that award. Yeah. And what else is that going to mean to the school? I mean, it's recognition, but mm -hmm. do you use that when you're out recruiting? Do you? Um, we use that as in terms of some of our recruiting materials. It's on that. It's on my signature. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. It's, okay. It's a significant thing. Oh, yes, it is. It is. And that's they, right. Yeah. They forgot to write us a $10 million check, but they uh, missed that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just an oversight. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, you host several music halls that boast mm -hmm. excellent acoustic. What's it like to play in those? I mean, have you, you know, you say you don't play much, but you must have played. Well, I was conducting the orchestra last year. Okay, last right. And, okay. and I, I go to concerts in these concert halls all the time. River Center has three performance venues. There's the Bill Hurd Theater, which is right. 2,000 seat. Beautiful hall, but you know, big. It's mm -hmm. not an intimate place. Yes, it is. Um, there's Legacy Hall, which seats about 400 people. And Legacy Hall is one of the most beautiful concert halls in the world. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's acoustically superb. Okay. It's beautiful wood. Everyone who comes in, and we bring in lots of people to perform, comments. They're just stunned if they've never been to Columbus that there's a hall of this quality it does here. Start, yeah. Right. Okay. And okay. We've had people do recordings, uh, and again, they bring in the recording engineers who bring in their mics and their all these things, and they, they set the mics up and they go, "I didn't need any of this. We didn't need that. Yeah, we wow. need you know, like four mics in the hall because the acoustics themselves are so good. Yeah. It, so it's a it's a very very special place. I remember yeah, touring that a couple of years ago and 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 seeing that work as somebody stood on on stage and just talked and how without any real amplification you're up there you're hearing them. Mm -hmm. right. person on the stage just talking and you're, mm -hmm. you're, it, i mean it is amazing when you're it really right, is yeah right. see and, that and again it just doesn't seem like it had that in columbus georgia yeah I mean, absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what a great facility yeah, yeah. now what's the third uh, third is called? called studio theater it's a black box which is mm -hmm. a you know Literally, it's a black box. Okay. What, it's, okay. It's un, what's unusual about it, what's very cool about it, is that un, it is rare for a music school to have a black box theater. Black box theaters are, tend to be in theater departments. Ah. So we're able to do, we do internet stuff, we do a lot of multimedia stuff. We have a, it's a drier acoustic, so we do things that involve some more amplification, new music, things like that. But we're okay. able to set light stage all this stuff and stuff. Uh, Just do mm -hmm. it right in there. That's, yeah. that's something. Right. Cool. That's well, I think this is a good place to take a break. Um, I'd just like to remind everyone, you're watching the Education Forum on coehp.tv.
We're back on the Education Forum. I'm Jeff Conklin, and today our special guest is Professor Fred Cohen from the Schwab School of Music here at Columbus State. And we've been talking quite a bit about the school, and we talked about Fred, but let's talk about some of the music and, and some of the performance that we have there at the school. Uh, do you have anything you want to share with us? <laughs> sure. <laughs> we, we have a, a few clips I'd like to share. These are from the Kaleidoscope concert last year. Uh, Kaleidoscope is a concert we do once a year. It yes. involves all the students pretty much for in, in a series of performances nonstop that lasts about an hour, an hour, ten yes. minutes. And it's, it's a, a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, a it's lot quite of fun. a thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, the first one is the jazz ensemble, big band, and they're playing a tune by Chick Corea. Okay. You know, that was great. I, and, you know, and I've been to the kaleidoscope before, so, you know, I've heard that stuff, and I'm always impressed by that. So, 
Thank you. Yeah, oh. we have a new uh, uh, the, 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 the director of jazz, Alex Prashunin, uh, started last year. He, okay. Interesting story, speaking of international okay. guys. He okay. uh, grew up in Russia and got sort of as a classical bassist. His parents were uh, musicians, teachers at the Nesson Conservatory, okay. which is a big conservatory in Moscow. And um, he got the jazz bug early mm. on okay. and then came to the United States Is that right? and pursued mm -hmm. his doctorate, finished his doctorate, and okay. then he's been teaching a few other places and now he's here. We're very, very happy with him. That's wild. Yeah, 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 Great that is. bass player and straddles classical and jazz beautifully. He's now the president of the Columbus Jazz Society as well. Oh, is that right? And I remember. Yeah. So yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> it works out. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, that, and that's been great. It, it yeah. has. So, yeah. yeah. Um, you got anything else for us today? Sure. Another clip is uh, uh, one of our students who was a senior last year. This is last year's show. Uh, okay. Andy Hudson. He's okay. a clarinetist and he's playing a piece by uh, Von Weber. Um, here he goes. Okay.
So that's really one of our students. That was that was incredible. I yeah. really liked that. That was a lot. from the same Kaleidoscope uh, concert from this last year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's great. I know when the Kaleidoscope, uh, you said it's an annual event. Right. You know, yeah. When that comes around, I see you see emails flying oh, all around yes. campus about mm -hmm. got to get tickets for it. You mm -hmm. know, make sure you get tickets for and it. And how much you enjoyed it. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. Quite yeah. A, well, we have a, a new a new show this year that uh, we're starting. That might be of similar interest. We're calling it Panorama. Okay. And the uh, first time we're doing it is November 20th, and it's similar to Kaleidoscope, except instead of, of of being kind of, it has a theme. We do it's sort of the history of music. Okay. Uh, in in the same thing in a, in sort of a nutshell, it's going to be very interesting. Never done it before. We take over the whole River Center, all the spaces. And is that right? Yeah. I look really forward to that. that. That's in November. November okay. 20th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's, New that's idea. Yeah. 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 Well, you need right. that. Plus, yeah. you need to. Need yeah. to display that more yeah. for the community a couple yeah. times a year. That's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else for us? Uh, we have one more clip, and this was also from Kaleidoscope. Okay. This is the, uh, the the CSU Philharmonic, and they're playing the uh, last movement of Shostakovich Fifth Symphony. <laughs>
I was impressed by that one. Yeah. That was very good. That was really wonderful. Nice. And, uh, now, when uh, I would imagine something like kaleidoscope or panorama that you were just talking about, that's you know, that's quite an undertaking. That that must involve all of your faculty and uh, just a tremendous amount of work and effort from students as well. Yeah. To put to put that together. Yeah, major logistical issues involved. Oh, but sure. We, yeah, yeah. But it's sure. uh, you know everyone everyone uh, pitches in and. You know, there, there's so much talent at the school. There's so much going on that it's really a question of organizing it. I mean, okay. If you were to lift the, the, you know, take the ceiling off of River Center, <laughs> you see what's going on. It's kind of unbelievable. But then to get everybody up on stage at the right time, that's the logistical piece. Oh, oh sure. Oh, bad. Yeah. So planning must be almost a year-long thing, I would imagine. Yeah. Or, yeah. We, uh, we some level. Yeah. Okay. We have committees and individuals and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. And, so then, and the, the, those aren't the only performances no, uh, that no. the public no. can see no. from the school. We've got about, um, we do about 120 performances uh, a year, and most of them are, are free. And uh, uh, the easiest place to get information is to go to our website, which is music.colstate.edu. Okay. Music, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And you get the calendar there. You can also sign up if you go on our website. If you put your email name in, you can get monthly updates. We'll oh, send out okay. monthly updates. Very good. Uh, Very and good. it's also available on the other community calendars. But we do a lot of performances. And as I said, 90% are free and open. And you know, a lot of people come to Legacy Hall and to Studio Theater. So. And, a, and, a, and these aren't, they're not necessarily, yeah, these very large performances. I mean, a lot of them are very intimate. You can yeah. Uh, yeah. Take, a, take your kids after school, mm -hmm. maybe, and just sit in on, well, on something. And I wanted to go there, too. Do we have programs that you guys provide for kids? Or? Yeah, we have yeah? a preparatory division, okay. um, which has a new director um, um, who is actually himself from Croatia oh. and has a lot of experience running uh, programs. He's run programs like this in New Jersey and around the world, Japan, okay. Korea. And we are making a real concerted effort now to reach out uh, enthusiastically toward the, uh, the children of Columbus. We've started a Suzuki program. We oh, have, yeah. Yeah, Suzuki yeah. Violin. Right, yeah. Um, we are working with the Boys and Girls Clubs. Uh, we are working with um, a, a variety of outreach programs. Uh, we started some violin programs. We were involved in starting a string program at Whitten Elementary School. Okay. Uh, we now yeah. branched that out into River Road. And there are other schools that are interested. And we're really, we see our, our mission, uh, we're very uh, thoughtful about this as, mm -hmm. as really integrating music into uh, the society in Columbus in every possible way. So That's great. A lot of effort going into that. Now, when you mention some of these outreach programs, what do you do? What do you provide there? Are, are, you know, is it just concerts it, it or? It varies. I mean, okay. like for the prep? Yeah. yeah. Well, the prep. I mean, we have we really go from kindergarten to 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 old age. We pre okay. We we do. You can take kinder music, which is for mm. little ones. I've heard of that. Yeah. Right? Locally, yeah. yeah. Right. And then we do also programs for for elders. We do. We have done elder hostel that kind of thing. Okay. For children, uh, lessons. Right, uh, mm -hmm. wonderful lessons at the school, p possibly sometimes at other locations, ensembles, chamber music ensembles. So there's uh, there are a lot of ways of getting involved. Okay, I see. okay. And, and lessons are taught by I would imagine faculty or, or students, students at the school probably faculty primarily. And okay, and okay. And if there's some students who are advanced have gone through pedagogical training, we'll be doing some of the teaching, but they're always supervised by faculty. <sighs> Very high quality. Okay. Have I seen stuff. signs for those around? About for music lessons there? Not for no, us. We don't no? put up signs. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought yeah. I, I, I'd yeah. seen but it's something. a good idea. We yeah. should. Yeah. <laughs> but what I, you know, what I like. <laughs> I thought it was you guys. Yeah. <laughs> what I like about the idea, it sounds like, you know, if I'm a parent and I have a, a seven year old, a 10 year old, and I want to just expose them to the idea of music and kind of get some lessons, it sounds like something that they can access through the, through the school to, to get some lessons. It's not necessarily this huge lifestyle change perhaps for a kid but gives them the opportunity to explore different instruments or a particular mm -hmm. instrument maybe a yeah. type of music I, I love that opportunity for the local community sure. it's easy to if you go on our website and click on the prep you can easily get phone numbers and contact information about that wow. and there are all these studies that have shown that you know studying an instrument and the discipline that goes along with it is tremendously advantageous to students. That's one okay. of the reasons that the elementary schools were studying these string programs because it really focuses students on, on improving academic achievements and it gives them such a sense of pride because mm -hmm. you know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, this is 
serious I stuff. Can, I can do this. Mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, and perform in front Look of people. Can, yeah, right. And that's all all the things. leadership skills that go in with that. And you know, right. as a um, as a former engineer, somebody who grew up mathematically inclined and interested in math, uh, many. I myself and many of uh, those mathematically inclined people tend to separate music and the arts from, from the, the sciences and it's a very different thing. And I remember it was, I was in my mid-twenties when I took my first music class and I took private lessons on the piano. Wow, and it was, yeah. it was at that time that I realized how mathematical music really is. I mean, and that was the thing I just found so interesting, uh, taking yeah. lessons. It's, oh my gosh, this, like, there's rhyme and reason to this. Like, there's real math going on here. You know? Sure. And, yeah. and I, I think that's, you know, it's, from that time I realized, wow, we really can support math and the sciences for kids by offering them yeah. music yeah. theory, by offering them musical experiences. Well, well, that goes along with your background. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> what, the thing I loved about, about science when I was in college and still do is I, was, I, was in, I did a lot of organic chemistry. I mean, it became my major. Mm -hmm. the, the, figuring out things in organic chemistry and writing compositions were very closely related because a lot of organic chemistry at that time, you know, it's, it's, there's an intuitive sense to it. I mean, there are rules and there are aspects and there are things that happen, but a lot of it is you sort of figure it out as you go along and you, you, you make sense of complicated connections. And okay. music, when you're writing music, similar kind of, I mean, it really was right? the same uh -huh. thought process but applied to different kind of media. Right, right. So, yeah. so maybe part of uh, our answer to uh, improving math achievement among kids is to, instead of pulling music out of schools, Adding, adding to it. I hate to stop the conversation, but I think we've run out of time, guys. All right. So I'd like to thank my guest, Dr. Fred Cohen, who's director of the Schwab School of Music here at Columbus State University, my co-host, Dr. Greg Blaylock, and I'd just like to say thank you for watching the Education Forum. I'm Jeff Conklin. The Education Forum is a production of the studio in the College of Education and Health Professions at Columbus State University, Columbus, Georgia. Executive producer, Jeff Conklin. The director today is Mike Baltimore. The show was produced by Greg Blaylock, camera and sound technician, Robert Carroll.